All right, guys, welcome back into another PGA DFS video. This week, we've got the Waste Management Phoenix Open, and it's going to be a little bit different than kind of what we remember with the Waste Management Phoenix Open. There's only going to be right around 5,000 fans, but that means we actually are going to get some fans back. So, you know, maybe the players are a little bit more amped up at this event like they typically would be because, you know, the fans get the people going and, you know, players start to play a little bit better. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to that, kind of seeing if the players are going to play a little bit different because of that, because it just becomes more interesting, uh, just something to, you know, kind of watch and look out for and maybe that's the reason why Roy McIlroy is playing in this event because there's finally going to be fans back we kind of know the news stories with him uh pretty much saying that he has been struggling to kind of get into the tournaments mentally just without fans there he typically plays better with fans uh, we got Webb Simpson returning back here you know he's just a great uh player for this type of course I uh, got Ricky Fowler in this one who he should be the sponsor player for this event rather than the farmer's insurance open player because this course fits his game a lot better than does the longer um farmer's insurance open uh we'll also have uh justin thomas in this one john rom uh, a couple of young guns coming in with will zatoris and then davis riley as well uh this course is a little bit longer it's a par 71 so we get another par four there uh it's uh, 7,261 yards, uh, and the course name is TPC Scottsdale. There's going to be 500 FedEx Cup points available for this one. We'll do the deep dive here in a second, but first we're going to do that recap of last week. All right, so pulling it up, I got the leaderboard here uh, on the 9 to 5 Sports page, and we saw that this week was another week where, you know, the variance was just a little bit higher, although there was some more predictability to it. Um, Patrick Reed, you know, he ranked 41st in the model rank. He's one of those guys that was just kind of a shoulder shrug play this week, where if you ended up on him, you ended up on him, and you got rewarded this week. Kind of the same with last week as well. It's kind of been a strange year with that, where... Um, some of these players where there's no real reason to like play them or fade them have been, you know, doing really well and producing. But Tony Finau came through in the clutch there on the last round, you know, top four in the model. Victor Hovland played well as well, top 25. Henrik Norlander was a guy I wrote down on uh, a little sticky note while I was like kind of doing a deep dive. It's kind of shocking to see him go out and really dominate there. But, you know, he came up with that second place finish. And then Ryan Palmer, obviously, he played well. Xander, uh, top 20 finish. It's crazy how much he probably helped a lot of people because he was a guy that looking at Friday, it seemed like he was going to miss the cut. And then he came through and made a top you know, five finish. That's kind of why he was such an interesting play last week because you knew it was going to be kind of a cut sweat, but you knew he had that upside to you know, go out and win if he did make the cut. John Ron played well. Wills of Torres was a guy that uh, we are on a decent amount. Uh, Sam Burns kind of played better. John Ha. Huh, he made the cut, did play a little bit poorly, but you know that was kind of easier play because we knew he'd make the cut. My only issue with last week was that I made a mistake that I knew I was kind of making for cash. I went Harris English instead instead of Sanjay M, and because of that, um, it wasn't my best week. But I did split it a little bit. I ended up making two cash contests with one with Sanjay and one with English just to see how it would play out, and the one with Sanjay Cash very easily. And that was kind of the theme last week as well, is that there's a lot of players in the same price point range that are kind of the exact same play. If you want to look at like Taylor Gooch, uh, Sam Burns, like Gary Woodland as well, you know, there's kind of a lot of players like that as well. But overall, kind of an okay week. I'm starting to see, just looking back on history, that that is an event that just has a lot more higher variance. It's a little bit harder to predict, probably because of the two courses, where this course we finally get normalcy for the most part it's gonna be refreshing let's get into it all right so i got it pulled up here got it sorted already for the waste management phoenix open here as you guys can see you know let's just zoom this bad boy in a little bit more for you um so yeah as we can kind of see here just looking at the data that we have it's very consistent as to how it plays it's the winning score is going to be right around 17 under par and the cut line is going to be right around one okay so what do i like to do when the cut line is going to be right around even par i like to look at bogey avoidance so i already know i'm going to do that that's just kind of something i do that's something i like to look at in terms of a player making the cut i tend to see that be a significant thing so this is a tpc style course uh the bermuda greens uh full tournament field event um weather hasn't played a big issue it's been perfect and great so uh, you know, maybe if the weather does get a little bit dicey, then it would start to play a little bit more difficult. Um, you'd start to see maybe the cut line be a, above par, 
for once in the last four years, but I'm not really expecting that. But yeah, we can see just overall just how it's played. It's been very consistent. So we'll look at the key stats just based on players that made the cut over the last four years and see if there's anything that's really standing out. Once again, you know, bogey avoidance, no surprise that that's kind of up there with those stats. Uh, birdie to bogey ratio, that makes sense as well. Uh, let's see, driving distance or driving accuracy. Driving accuracy a little bit more, but good drives gained is kind of the biggest uh, stat there. Um, nothing really crazy other than that. So let's really, you know, to try dial it. And we'll do top 25 here. I actually will just do top 30. Uh, yeah, top 30. Top 29, I guess. All right, so just trying to see if the stats change that much from you know, players that made the cut to right around top 29. All right. So bogey avoidance, birdie to bogey ratio. Okay. Strokes gain T to green. Yeah, that makes sense. Just how significant is that going to be this year? Ball striking and par four scoring with that added par four. That makes a lot of sense. Strokes gain approach. Okay. Uh, let's drop it down a little bit more. We'll do top 12 here over the last four years. So yeah, ball striking does start to become very significant, par four scoring, uh, birdie to bogey ratio. I will be looking at bogey avoidance. So we're looking at birdie to bogey ratio over birdie or better percentage just because it is a little bit more difficult of a course. That does make sense. Um, and, you know, it makes sense that'd be the 200 to 175 yardage range just because there's a little bit more, you know, there's that extra par four. I don't know if we exactly have to look at that. Uh, one surprising thing here is scrambling, uh, starting to pop a little bit. That is something we typically don't see. So that, that'd be something we could look at. So what we're seeing right now, uh, ball striking, bogey avoidance, birdie to bogey ratio, par four scoring, you know, those are going to be the four key stats for me. And then maybe scrambling as well as like the fifth stat, kind of the secondary stat. Let's just do it year by year to see if there's been kind of a difference here. So 2020, um, top 12. Yeah, no real changes there. Um, let's see. 2019. Last year. Wow, putting did not matter that much at all last year. Um, wow, that is crazy. Wow, putting. Wow, putting is not that significant this week, which is surprising to me. Wow. I did not see that coming. So it's kind of like last week where, yeah, obviously if they're making putts, that's a good thing, but you don't exactly have to concentrate on it too much. That's a little bit shocking to me. I mean, I always like to look at putting, uh, you know, if a player's hitting fairways, hitting greens, and making putts. That's always what you want. That's always the formula. So let's pull it up and see which players would kind of be the good key stats for this week. So I got it pulled up here. Um, we'll really zoom in on this bad boy as well. All right, so I'm going to go by uh, ball striking. I do, I think that this is going to be the most key stat, so I'm really going to dial that in. I'm going to go like top 50, okay? Because <laughs> I really think that's going to matter. Um, this is one where you do want to look at total driving as well. They kind of play off of each other, total driving and ball striking, but that is something I'm going to be looking at. Um, let's see here, par four scoring. I do like that as well. Going to do right around top 75. Then bogey avoidance, I'm going to set that at right around 100. Uh, can't really do that, huh? That's kind of crazy. Just trying to see what we got here. All right, so we really were able to kind of trim the... Just This is just based off of the world golf rankings. These would be the players that would be the best stat fits if they were in the field. So we're looking at John Rahm, that makes sense. Rory, that makes sense. Webb Simpson, that makes sense as well. Um, really no deep dives thus far. So if you guys are trying to get some outright bets, you know, we don't, you just don't have that just yet. Let's move the ball striking up to around top 100. See if that gets us any uh, more elite plays. Deep values, potentially. Potential deep values. Patton Kazire, I believe he's in the field. That brings him into play. Um, Daniel Berger as well. Siwoo Kim, you know, that's not that bad. That's kind of surprising, but hmm. overall interesting week. Let's pull in scrambling as well. Um, we'll just do top 100. I'm going to go top 100 for all these real quick that I have just to see. Hmm. 
no changes in there that much. Okay. So yeah, we kind of have it nailed down as to kind of who would be the kind of your early bets if that's kind of the way you want to look at it. John Rom, JT, Rory Webb, uh, Berger, and then maybe like Kazire as well. So kind of just interesting to look at it that way. Um, but that's all I have for the course preview video here for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm very excited for this one, to be honest with you guys. It's going to be a lot better. Uh, I was just like, I like to look at past results. I know like personally, DFS wise, last week, much more higher variance week, kind of the last two weeks are. And then this one is always one where I've done what? Three for three the last three years. So hoping to go four for four, that'd be pretty sweet. Um, if you guys want to join nine to five nation, look at this data for yourself. Uh, links in the description is $10 a month. If not, just give me that like, helps the videos out a ton. All right, thanks for watching guys. And as always, let's keep cashing.